Hello, Haunted Family. Welcome back. Story 1 A Ghost from the Alamo It was way back in the early 2000s. I had accepted a short-term work assignment on the 32nd floor of a building in Houston, Texas. My job required me to make frequent trips to the reproduction department on the lowest level in the basement to make several copies of documents to be distributed at meetings. On one of my frequent trips, I felt a warm hand touching my left cheek, and I heard a man's voice calling me ma'am. I could see no one standing there. I felt a chill move up my back, and then I caught a glimpse of an apparition move from behind me into my line of sight. He was taller than me, wearing a hat in a holster with a gun. He said again, Ma'am, can you please tell me what year it is? I felt chills run up my neck. I had heard voices from ghosts many times in my life, but never once did I see a ghost of a famous person speak directly to me. I answered him, It's 2000, sir. He said, You can see me? He then said, My name is Captain William Travis, and I need to know who won the Alamo. Who won that battle? I replied, Well, Santa Anna won. The captain lowered his head and mumbled something in failure. You and all those men and women and children who died in the Alamo are heroes in Texas history books, I told him. Captain William Travis disappeared from the elevator as we reached the lower floor, and after that day I saw him frequently riding the elevator, but he seldom spoke. He would acknowledge me occasionally with a fingertip on the brim of his hat. I believe once he knew the truth, he could go on living his spirit life in that building I guess living his best afterlife. Story 2 The Ghost of the Red Cavalier For years, I drove a Ford Escort. And it was great, but the air conditioner would not get cold. So I decided I needed to buy a new car. Fixing the air conditioner in the Ford Escort was going to cost more than the car was worth. I fell in love with this little Geo Metro on the lot. But my husband wanted this Cavalier. It was bigger, better for all of us. So that's what we went with. There was a dent in the trunk. Apparently, this car had been one of those drug seized cars. And in order to get into the trunk, they had had to break it open. The dealer actually referred to this as the Red Devil car. And now it was all mine. Two weeks from the day I brought the car home, I backed up into a tree and broke the car's trunk latch. So I went out to buy a new trunk latch. After that, I went out to eat, and that car got hit from behind. Another dent. Hmm. I tried desperately to give the car away. I hated this thing. But I was stuck driving this car from hell. Some time went by. Then I went out to eat again. I stopped for some gas and a pickup truck plowed into my car while I was parked at the gas station. The man was old, didn't see my car, several hundred dollars in damages. Months passed and I was on my way to work and a man ran a stop sign and plowed right into the Red Devil car. I was not hurt. When I got out of my car to exchange information with the other man, I swear a ghost came out of the car and stood beside me on the street. I did not recognize the man, and he didn't look like the devil. I tried to ignore him. I prayed no one else could see this ghost standing beside me. 
the cops were called to take our information, and the other driver cried, saying it was my fault. He told the cops that he assumed I was supposed to stop and allow him to go by. My insurance ended up paying to have the Red Devil car fixed, and the man got away scot-free. I swear, the Red Devil car will not die. Three years passed, and I painted the car blue. No crashes since I painted the car blue. But the story is not over. You see, I bought the Red Devil car in June. In July, I had my first stroke. Four years later, the car is parked at home, and the cold air went out. So I went out and bought a beautiful 2004 Pontiac. And then I had a massive stroke. And my beautiful new Pontiac had to go back to the dealership. The next year, an attorney called me, saying that they were going to sue me, because I had painted the Red Devil car a different color. The attorney asked why I had painted it. I didn't know what to say. I tried for years to forget the reasons why. And now the curse seems to be back for some reason. I'm living in a nursing home now. I had that Red Devil car repossessed. And honestly, I wish I'd never saw it. Story 3 Desert Angel I was in the Air Force, temporarily stationed in the Middle East. My first week there, I was getting the first class tour of the base. It was huge. Almost all desert with a small road that went around the perimeter. An airman was showing me the grounds when we stopped at a small pile of stones stacked maybe three feet high with a ring of stones surrounding it. I noticed a set of dog tags sitting on top of the stones along with a pack of cigarettes. I asked about the strange sight and was told it was a monument for a female airman that was killed in that exact spot in an accident. Her fellow troops built that monument and ever since then, they claim that occasionally they'll see her ghost patrolling the area, making sure that everyone's safe. Now, I'm a skeptic. I didn't believe much in any ghost stories, but that kind of freaked me out a little bit. One very dark night, I was in charge of the squad in that area. Another sergeant and myself were driving around checking on sensors, when a young female airman at the command post radioed stating that she had just picked up a vehicle on the infrared camera resembling a Hummer driving near the sensor at a certain point. We were quite a ways away from there, so we really had to punch it to get over there. When we arrived on scene, we found nothing. Not even vehicle tracks in the sand. I radioed back that we had found nothing and to double check the area. She came back very excited, stating that she now saw the Hummer near a different sensor. I began to doubt her senses because it would take at least 20 minutes to get from the point we were at to that point. But we jumped in our vehicles and we raced over there. And again, we found nothing. No tracks, no vehicles, nothing. I started to think that maybe we were being messed with. She radioed back and said that she was now spotting the Hummer behind us in a distance that would take a good 40 minutes to cover. We turned around and we headed back as fast as we could. And then we see a female airman on the side of the road waving her arms up and down in slow motion. I hit the brakes. And that's when I noticed a three-foot washed-out patch of the road right in front of us. At the speed we were moving, we would have been killed if we had hit that. My partner and I went back to investigate and thank our guardian angel who had just saved us from hitting that. Only to find that there was no one in sight. We had literally just passed her. And then I remembered the story 
of the ghostly female who is supposed to patrol this area. Is that who we saw? Could this really be her ghost and she's out here on permanent patrol duties watching out for us? I gave my partner a look of disbelief. And he shrugged and said, don't even think about telling any of this to anybody. They'll think we're crazy. We walked back to our vehicle. Radioed back to base and said, disregard. And never spoke of it again. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the stories. I particularly like the second story of the haunted car. My grandma used to tell us this story when I was little about a haunted vehicle that they had apparently had years ago. It wasn't anything bad or malicious. Just the driver's side door would open and close randomly at night. This, of course, was before video cameras became norm and long before we all had a video camera in our pocket on our cell phone. Man, I would have loved to have experienced that. Thanks for listening. If you like the stories, hit the like button. Subscribe if you want to. Leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for listening. Bye. Music by Carl Casey at Wattbat Audio.